Coming up, milestones in the fight for FBO fee transparency. AOPA leading the way, what it means to you. Overcoming all odds, going from being a victim of violence to being a CFI. Plus, the future is bright. We visit an aviation career expo. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Celebrate 20 years of Sonic's aircraft by building and flying your dream. Quick handling, fun and capable kit aircraft models to suit your flying passions. Get the best performance per dollar with Sonic's aircraft. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. The aviation world unites for transparency, your right to know before you taxi in. AOPA and five other associations this week released the Know Before You Go Best Business Practices. That's a set of recommended communication practices for fixed-based operators so that you won't be surprised by unexpected fees and charges. A lot of uh, strategy, a lot of effort, a lot of communications, and, uh, and I am proud to see that AOPA working with the industry, uh, got to a good place without, uh, you know, wrestling in the mud for too long. Um, but again, I do believe this is a beginning and a start and a baseline of understanding what's fair and reasonable and non-discriminatory pricing that we expect uh, out of our public airports. The joint release calls on FBOs to move quickly to implement the best practices, which include clearly communicating all available services, charges and fees, and showing current retail fuel prices. The information should be easily available online, and AOPA is ready to partner with FBOs to help publish the information. Where there are some folks that take, take a little longer to get through with the mom and pop FBO, we want to work with them and be understanding. And if we can have them call into us or we call into them to get those, uh, those prices posted, uh, if they're appropriate, we'll help. And AOPA is telling the FBOs that we'll help communicate the fees through our online airport directory. This has been a big project for a couple of years. Uh, as I think I've said this before, AOPA voice in the wilderness on behalf of consumers for a long time, couldn't get others interested, and finally the rest of the industry has kind of come along and, and now has uh, agreed that transparency, you should know before you go uh, to an airport what it is that you might f uh, face. Right, it's very encouraging. We're all working together. It's not, it's not a pro or con, for or against. It's we right. just want everybody to understand what the fees are before they right. go in. Seems simple. Yes. And that's a wrap. The AOPA fly-in to Gulf Shores presented by the Alabama Department of Transportation Aeronautics Bureau caps off a great year of AOPA fly-ins. We had thousands show up for the beautiful weather. But Paul, AOPA Live's Paul Harrop tells us it's a new beginning for an aviator who works harder than all of us just to fly. It's a beautiful day in Gulf Shores. People from all over are enjoying the fly-in. But it's even sweeter for one San Francisco Bay Area pilot. For Quincy Carr, those epaulets are hard-earned. Well on the path to his dream of becoming a commercial pilot, Quincy was gunned down in a random act of violence. He lost the use of his legs, but not his dream of being a CFI. It's, it really started with me with young eagles, okay? G giving rides from the, you know, and letting the students or the, or the kids fly. And me letting the kids fly, you know, just for fun. And then I actually realized, oh my gosh, the kids can do it. Like the, the, the kids were learning and they were learning at, at a rate that I thought, well, maybe I should teach flying. Airplanes with adaptive controls are hard to find at a flight school, but Linwood right, Noe slick. with Operation Prop is working to change that. He's bringing hand controls back to the market. So into January, uh, we'll have hand controls back out there and we've got a number of people around the country waiting. Quincy used the hand controls to earn his CFI rating last week. At the fly-in breakfast, AOPA President Mark Baker petting his wings. It, it just feels so good to be able to be at this event at this time right now. I mean, this, this is what it truly means to be a part of AOPA, right? It's giving people the freedom, a chance to, to fly. And now that I'm actually CFI, guess what? I get to give that freedom back to other people. It's hard to top that at breakfast, but the usual fly-in fare set in southern sunshine complimented Quincy's achievement. Folks learning from Mike Bush and team at the maintenance seminar and three-time space shuttle pilot Ken Cameron giving a talk called Flying Vintage Hypersonic Gliders. Clever. Been looking for an opportunity to fly to an AOPA fly-in and 
This one was close enough to us. We're in Madison, Mississippi, so nice little trip down. For pilots like Bill Lear, it doesn't take much convincing to visit Gulf Shores. Uh, beautiful weather, lots of things to do, lots of friends to see, so we've had a good time. It wouldn't be representative of aviation along the Gulf Coast if there wasn't a good military presence like this Viper over one shoulder and the Black Hawk over the other. But one group is using an old military warbird to remember the stories from Vietnam. Good afternoon, my name is Drill Sergeant Mike. You may address me on a first name basis. My first name is Drill Sergeant. We're here for three purposes. Number one, to salute our veterans. Thank you for your service, sir. We're, we're here for our children. Why, we wanna show the kids what aviation's all about. We like to show our civilian populace what aviation is all about. We're from Ozark, Alabama, which is right close to Fort Rucker, the home of Army Aviation. So we're here to tell you the story of Army Aviation. After a spirited Huey flight with the stories of sacrifice these iconic choppers have seen fresh on our minds, we cap off another great afternoon enjoying freedom paid for by those who served and enjoyed to the fullest I by all. all of my In Gulf Shores, Alabama, Paul Hirup. AOPA Live. Some inspiring stories. Uh, more than 5,700 people joined us for the final fly-in of the season. Our events team is already working on next year's fly-ins. Look for the locations to be announced early next year. And another big step toward the future for Strato AirNet by Aerospace as the medium altitude long-range unmanned aerial system made several more successful test flights. The flights are happening out of Northern Colorado Regional Airport. The six test flights last month collected data on performance and operations. By Aerospace intends the Strato AirNet to serve a, a variety of missions, including security, agriculture, and utility work. AOPA is working with drone manufacturer DJI to reduce the risk UAS pose to manned aircraft. The work comes after a recent Emory-Riddle study. During a 13-day survey period, nearly 200 illegal drone flights took place near a Florida-class Charlie Airport. As a result of the study, AOPA evaluated DJI's geofencing technology. The tech comes with every DJI drone to discourage flights near airports. AOPA staff found that the DJI geosystem left some areas overprotected and left other areas lacking protection. DJI recently announced it was updating its geofencing technology in response to the recommendations. And sometimes things just don't go the way you planned. One drone operator in Oklahoma City learned this week that what goes up, well, it might take a little while to get down. The Oklahoma City Fire Department is sharing these photos of one of their ladder trucks helping to rescue a drone entangled in a utility pole, a thoroughly modern version of a cat in a tree. Coming up, a new autopilot for Bonanzas. And the future is bright in aviation. We'll be right back. You always knew it was your perfect airplane. Now it can have the perfect panel. Garmin G500 TXI and Garmin G600 TXI, the next generation of flight displays. Welcome back. Garmin's more affordable high-tech GFC 500 autopilot is now available in more aircraft. The retrofit autopilot can now be installed in several variants of Beechcraft 33 Bonanzas and Debonairs. The GFC 500 offers a range of safety features like envelope protection and a level button. Starting cost around $7,000. The GFC 500 is a non-TSO'd unit that's become available for certificated aircraft through the efforts of AOPA and EAA. You can find the full list of approved aircraft models at Garmin's website. And Pilatus is celebrating a new completion center. The 118,000 square foot facility is where the turboprop PC-12s and PC-24 jets come to be finished after they're built in Switzerland. The facility is at Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport in Broomfield, Colorado. That's Jeffco to the rest of us. And even with all the modern technology in cockpits these days, when things go wrong, having an air traffic controller who goes the extra mile to help you can save your life. Every year, the National Air Traffic Controllers Association honors those controllers at the Archie League Awards. This year, Phil Enos, Tom Hurd, and Hugh Hunton from Fort Worth Center were honored for saving the life of a Cessna Cardinal pilot. The Cardinal experienced complete electrical failure at night 
in instrument conditions. The pilot, a doctor from Texas, didn't think he'd survive the ordeal. He even texted his son to tell him goodbye. The controllers, however, wouldn't give up. They spent hours trying to contact the pilot. They resorted to Googling the airplane's tail number, which led them to find the pilot's cell phone number, and they were finally able to text him and guide him to safety, turning on the runway lights and calling the fire trucks to the airport. Congratulations to all the controllers who won the Archie Awards this year, and thanks to all of the ATC employers, employees who work hard to keep us safe. Yeah, really, what a great story. They're all great stories, and that one in particular, talk about perseverance. Yeah, wow, they've used all the tools they had. One of our own is getting a huge honor. Many of you know Barry Schiff from his column in AOPA Pilot Magazine. Barry is among four being inducted into the Calif California Aviation Hall of Fame this month. He joins inductees Dick Rattan, Mike Melville, and Angela Mason. The ceremony is at the Museum of Flying in Santa Monica. There's a free reception for it on the 15th. Find more info and RSVP on the Museum of Flying website. Speaking of California, one of the most iconic airports out west is getting a makeover, thanks to the Marines. Catalina Island Airport, the airport in the sky, is going to be repaved as part of a United States Marine Corps training exercise. The Channel Island simulates a foreign land where Marines would have to build an infrastructure without a lot of resources. The project is set to start next month. A temporary run runway will be available during construction, but prior permission will be required to land. The $5 million project is paid for with donations to the Catalina Island Conservancy. There are an ever-increasing number of opportunities for students interested in aviation careers. This week, AOPA Live's Josh Cochran takes us to Leesburg, Virginia, where nearly $400,000 of scholarships are awarded to help students reach their goals. From helicopters to ag planes, these students are getting a hands-on look at different aircraft and learning about the different career opportunities in aviation. It's all part of the Aviation Education and Career Expo in Leesburg, Virginia. A lot of students think that aviation just means flying, and there's so many other things to do. I mean, there's a little something for everybody, and so it's important that they're exposed to that so that they can have those doors open for them. Yeah, really awesome. it's really cool. ProJet Aviation hosts the event each year, and it keeps growing. I think it's important because our industry needs to grow and we need pilots. There's going to be a huge pilot shortage. There already is one. It's going to grow. We need to get ahead of that game and we need to get kids engaged at this level because they're on the brink of making career decisions. To engage the students, ProJet brought in speakers from across the industry, from military pilots to an NTSB accident investigator. They gave students advice about what they can do to reach their career goals. You can attain anything as long as you work hard for it. I spent a very long time as an intern at the NTSB because I wanted this job that badly. And I worked hard for it. I did everything I could for it. And finally my dream came true and I got the job. At the event, many of the students got a major leg up on their careers with nearly $400,000 of scholarships awarded. And many of the students have big dreams for the future. I'm going to definitely use it for college and hopefully take it into the science field because I'm very passionate about physics, chemistry, and now aeronautics. I think it would be awesome to get my license and then work my way up to a CFI and be able to teach kids while I'm in my career. I've been really interested in flight lessons and being an astronaut. So my long-term goal is to be a pilot for the Boeing 777. The event drew over 700 students and they're looking forward to next year already. This is my first time coming out here and I didn't know what to expect, um, but I honestly like it. I love it so much. Like I didn't expect to be right next to planes and it, it's really organized and everyone's so friendly here and all the vendors are really nice and they have so many different opportunities to offer so many different students and I just really love it. I'm definitely coming back. In Leesburg, Virginia, Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. The scholarships were provided by generous donors from around the aviation industry, including flight schools, universities, and AOPA. Lots of excited kids. <laughs> I love to see that. Love yes, it. Yes, it, it's really great, and it's such a great time to be enthusiastic about aviation because there are so many career opportunities right now. It is, so kids get involved. That's right. Finally this week, we leave you with some more footage from the Huey flight you saw in the Gulf Shores story. Our thanks to the Friends of Army Aviation Ozark for being with us at the event. And remember, if you have comments about our show, let us hear it. Drop us a line, AOPA Live at AOPA.org is the address.
Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft.